These homemade cat food hacks will help you please your picky cat, make raw food faster, keep raw food fresh longer, and just overall make your life easier. I've been making Jericho's raw cat food since 2019 and his diet has evolved a lot since then. I started with ground meat, bones, and organs using a premix, portioning that out. Then I started adding whole chunks and then raw meaty bones and some whole prey. So I fine-tuned his diet and some of these hacks along the way. And I'm going to include some beginner-friendly hacks as well as some more advanced hacks that I took too long to get to. Hey friends, it's Justin Jericho. It is a blessing that you are here. Hallelujah. Yeah. So the first homemade cat food hack that I have for you is specifically for beginners, people who are currently feeding their cats processed food. So dry food and canned food, any combination, if it's dry food only, canned food only, or a combination of the two. And the hack is to switch to commercially available fresh food before you attempt homemade food. The reason for that, I'm sure as you know, cats are picky about changes, especially when they are eating processed food. So they get picky because of the texture, because of the taste. Pet food manufacturers are very smart and they know that cats are not grain and carb eaters by choice. Kibble and most canned foods are high in grains and even if they are grain free, they are high in carbs. So they add flavor enhancer palatins to make the food more enticing for the cat to eat it and the cat becomes addicted to it and that's why they're piggy, on top of natural survival instincts of just being cautious about new things. So before you go through the work of doing the research of finding a recipe that works, that's actually complete for your cat, has ingredients that you like and can feed and have access to, then you're going to buy the ingredients, then you're going to understand you know, how to meal prep safely, how to feed raw safely, how to put it all together and then portion it and then freeze it and then you're gonna feed it and your cat doesn't wanna eat it. So you're gonna go through all of that work and your cat has absolutely no fresh food in his diet. He's not gonna wanna eat it at all and you're going to get frustrated and you're going to give up. So it's much easier to gradually upgrade how you feed your cat and what you feed your cat before you jump into homemade food. So I would suggest upgrading how you feed your cat in that you aren't leaving out a 24 seven all access buffet and also upgrading what you feed your cat Upgrading the treats, upgrading the fresh food toppers very, very slowly. Help your cat get used to eating better quality ingredients and then switch slowly to either a raw diet that's available commercially, it's already complete and balanced, or a lightly cooked wet food. I have a lot of videos on this channel that explain exactly how to do that, or if you prefer to pay for the convenience of having everything in one place, plus planners, trackers, spreadsheets, and product recommendations and everything bundled nicely together, you can check the description for my Switch Your Cat to Raw Blueprint. It's a self-paced video course that includes everything you need to go from dry or canned food to a fresh food diet that's available commercially. The next hack is to have a plan in place. So I kind of already went over what that plan entails in the previous section, but basically having a plan in place is going to eliminate stress, eliminate overwhelm, and you're going to know exactly what to do every step of the way. Now I know that planning itself can sometimes be overwhelming, but that's just because you're looking at a bird's eye view of everything that you have to do. You don't have to do all of these things in one day, but you do wanna have a proper plan of at each step along the way. That way, if you get busy, you know, life gets in the way, things happen. If it's already written down and you already say, okay, week one, I'm gonna do this. Week two, I'm gonna do this. And you have specific things that you focus on each week and each month, then you don't even have to think about it. The plan is already in place and that's what you do. So for your plan, you're going to have to find a recipe that's actually complete. We're gonna talk about this in the next section a little bit more. And you're going to figure out where you need to buy your ingredients, when you're going to thaw those ingredients because proper thawing and portioning and serving is, is essential to eliminate bacterial contamination risk. And then when you're going to meal prep, how you're going to transition it, and when you're going to you know, do all of these things, you need to bake this into your schedule, into your current routine. And in the beginning, it's going to take longer 
like for me, you know, back when I first started, it took much longer than it did now, but this is years that have gone by. So I fine tune the routine, take notes after I do it. Okay, that didn't really work or that did work or I forgot to do this. So you're going to fine tune it as you go. In the beginning, it's gonna take a little longer, but as you get more experience, just like with any new skill that you're learning, it will get quicker and it will get easier as time goes on. And as it's baked into your routine, then it becomes more of a habit and you don't even think about it. The next homemade cat food hack that I have for you is do not use a free recipe that's available online unless it provides a nutritional analysis. And I covered this extensively in a different video, so you can go back and watch that. But basically I took three recipes that are available for free online and they are all labeled as vet approved, put them into diet formulation software and it turns out that a lot of them are deficient in a lot of vitamins and minerals and one of them was even deficient in basically every single amino acid these are essential nutrients for our cats. So I understand that it's enticing to use a free recipe online because it's free. So there's you know no barrier to entry. There's also minimal ingredients. Typically there's only a couple of ingredients, so it seems easier. But and you know, of course we don't want to see a long list of synthetic supplements. That's why we're feeding homemade food. But at the same time, we do need a slightly longer list of meat ingredients if we're going to focus on whole foods to complete our cat's diet. If you see a recipe that only includes four ingredients, there's no way that that could be complete. So we need to make sure that we're using a recipe that's actually complete for our cat's life stage. So we want to make sure that there's muscle meats, muscular organs like heart, gizzard, tripe, things like that, raw meaty bones or some kind of bone source for calcium, eggshell powder, bone meal powder, or ground bones, and secreting organs. The more the better. Liver is a mandatory minimum, but kidney and spleen are also really great. And then we're going to have to use some whole foods like fish for vitamin D, vitamin E, kind of unavoidable, you're gonna to have to use a supplement. Manganese, you're gonna to have to use a supplement if you can't feed tripe. So there's a lot of like little little things here and there that if you're just looking at a recipe, it looks like there's a lot of variety, but you actually have to see the nutritional analysis to know if it's complete or not. And if you need help with a plan and also recipes, I have a course called Homemade Cat Food Starter Kit. It's linked in the description. So I include week to week, what you should plan out, how to do it, planners, trackers, same thing as my Switch to Raw course. Everything is laid out and planned out for you. Everything that I've gone through, I've done the work so you don't have to. And I also include complete cat food recipes. They're complete for adult cats and I provide a nutritional analysis. So you can check that link in the description below and you can see the ingredients that are used in the recipe before you buy it to make sure that it works for you. The next homemade cat food hack that I have for you is more for people who are, they might already be dabbling in homemade cat food, get the right meal prep supplies. So I was using the same poultry shears that were so difficult to cut through the bones and I thought that maybe sharpening them would help and I just, but they get loose where, where the two blades interact and so I finally bought a new pair of kitchen shears and oh my gosh, they cut through chicken wings like as if they're cutting through paper. That really makes a big difference. So buying the right meal prep tools, you know, having like legit poultry shears that aren't 10 years old, that, <laughs> that barely cut through anything, it's really going to cut down on the time that it takes you to meal prep and also the stress and frustration, right? Because like who wants to use a janky poultry shear to cut through bones? It's really frustrating. But the new kitchen shears, so, so nice. And it's not even like they're like this, you know, expensive, high quality, you know, it's like $12 a pair of kitchen shears, which is <laughs> pretty standard among them. But just for the fact that it was new, it's a tighter screw and the blades are nice and sharp, cuts through the bone really nicely. The other meal prep hack that you can do is if you don't want to cut up the pieces of meat, that's what I do. I just chunk them into smaller pieces. If you want it more ground texture, use a food processor. So I did this with my mom's four cats recently when I made my recipes for them. And you can put boneless meat, don't put bones in a food processor, but you can put boneless meat, maybe not the gizzards because those are quite tough, but any other boneless meat like, you know, thighs, boneless thighs, some chuck steak, the secreting organs, the heart, tripe, that can go in there and then just pulse it. 
and it will come out, you can leave it in larger chunks, you can keep grinding it and it'll come out more like ground raw food. So that's great for boneless recipes or if you wanna chunk up the meat that way, cut the bones separately. That way you don't have to invest in a huge grinder. You can just use a nice food processor. I'll put a link in the description below. I don't have any experience with, with uh, grinders, grinding bones because I've always fed already ground meat bones and organs and then I used a premix and then I switched to whole chunks and whole raw meaty bones. So I've never ground bones myself. I would say look through the reviews to make sure that it can handle bones. Most of the time you need a commercial grade grinder. I don't have any experience with that. The next homemade cat food hack that I have for you might just be for me, but I'm sure many of you are also eating the carnivore diet yourself, because I am. Share meat and organs with your cat. So this is a nice hack because I eat a lot of meat. Jericho eats a lot of meat. I buy my meat at local farmer's markets or I shop online because some of them will ship uh, shipped to me. And so whatever leftovers that I don't use for Jericho's diet, because sometimes you can't get exact. Sometimes I need just over two pounds or something of one, one piece of meat. So I'll use what I need for Jericho's diet and then I'll eat the rest. Same with secreting organs. Jericho and I both eat beef liver, kidney, and spleen. Sometimes I switch it up and do lamb liver or whatever is available basically but we do three secreting organs. And since that's a small amount of his diet, he doesn't need a lot of it. And the smallest pack that I can find is one pound. So that one pound pack, if I was only giving it to Jericho, would last probably five months at least in the freezer. And I don't want it sit in the, sitting in the freezer that long. So to keep it fresher longer, I eat it too. So I make a nice little supplement for myself with all three of those, lots of butter, uh, nutritional yeast, salt, and cod liver oil. And then, you know, so again, I, I divvy out what I need for Jericho's diet and then I will portion out the rest for myself. So that helps the food stay fresher longer. And it, it just, it feels nicer eating more of the whole animal instead of just, you know, the most of my diet is just ground beef because <laughs> that's more affordable than steak. But it, it just feels nicer to use up the food uh, quicker so it's not in the freezer so long. The next homemade cat food hack that I have for you, this one took me <laughs> took me about four years to actually invest in, and that is a vacuum sealer. So previously with Jericho's food, I would just put it into glass jars and then that would go in the freezer. But now I have a vacuum sealer, so I'm able to not only keep the food fresher longer, but also bulk more of his food. So I used to do it every single week. I would portion everything out, weigh everything individually, and then weigh every you know, weigh out his daily portions every week. Now I can portion eight weeks worth, so two months worth of food. And it's only it only takes me about an hour and a half of active time. In the background, there's some time that it takes for the food to thaw. And then before you use the vacuum sealer, you want the food to freeze slightly because otherwise it'll suck out all the moisture and it won't get a tight seal. So there is some non-active time outside of that one and a half hours, but me standing cutting and weighing out and then vacuum sealing takes about one and a half hours. So one and a half hours for two months worth of food, amazing. And then each individual week, I take that vacuum seal pack, it has everything for one week, and then that's what I portion into daily and that takes about 20 minutes each week. So it's nice to have the vacuum sealer because any extra stuff you know, I try to do my best to share so that we don't have extra, but things like chicken necks, I don't eat extra. I, I don't eat those. So that whatever I have extra will go in the vacuum seal. And then the next time I portion his food, at least it, yeah, it's been in the freezer for a few more months than I would like, but at least it's it stands to be a little fresher because it has that vacuum seal. So that has come in really handy. The other reason that I like it is because it saves on freezer space. So like I said, I eat a lot of meat. I always buy like 20 pounds of beef at one time. And then I also get a couple, like almost 20 pounds of salmon. So beef and salmon is mainly what I eat. And so the top of my freezer is all for my food and I just organize it really nicely. And then the bottom of the freezer is all for Jericho's food. So using the vacuum seal packs one week, flattening them out and then stacking them on top of each other, that really saves a lot on freezer space instead of having like you know, eight weeks worth of <laughs> glass jars wouldn't even fit. But if you put it into the vacuum seal and it's nice and flat, 
it's it's so nice. So it keeps the food fresher longer and it's easy to use and it also saves on freezer space. So if you're ready to feed your cat homemade food, check out the description below. Switch your cat to raw blueprint that will help you go from dry or wet food to a commercially available fresh food. And then homemade cat food starter kit will help you go from that commercial fresh food to a homemade raw diet. And you can save 25% if you bundle them together. On either of the pages, just click add to cart and then the 25% offer will pop up. Thank you so much for watching.